I'm not sure this is worth a whole video, but this is a little bit about the abilities or characteristics, whatever you want to call them, and just some musings about this version of Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. It was quite a surprise to me upon getting the Dungeon Master's Guide and, and a bit of a, of a weird, shifting, shocked feeling um, when I saw the various methods for generating these scores. Up until then, it had never occurred to me or anyone that I had met that you did anything except roll them in order using 3D6, and you, you took what you got and, and did that. Now, it was also clear that when you, I guess I said it, nor anyone I met, let's just say no one ever said otherwise, you'd certainly come to sit down with a table and a bunch of people and made up characters and brought them, and I would look to my left and I would look to my right and was like, wait a minute. You know, you rolled that, really? And, you know, this proliferation, especially since the player's handbook had come out, the proliferation of, of paladins, you know, seemed all of a sudden charisma seemed to have become remarkably easy to roll a 17 or 18 for. And of course, nobody could resist those uh, extra strength features that you roll if you get um, an 18 strength and you're a male human or other critter or other type that can have those higher ranges. And so, you know, 18, and who would want 18, one through 50, you know, because that was a whole category, 50% after 18 was, was the low range. No, every, for some reason, 18 and then 51 plus was shockingly easy to roll, apparently, all of a sudden. Well, anyway, though, uh, there it is now, 1979, and I look at the, uh, the new Dungeon Master's Guide, and there are these four methods. Almost the very first page of the, uh, of the new book. I mean, in fact, you, know, you, you turn one page and there you are right there in a very readable spot. And um, they're, they're, they're quite impressive. You say, wow, I can roll a character this way. And a couple of them are very straightforward. So you would roll 12 characters. The six attributes in order, abilities, characteristics, in order. And then you do that 12 times, and then you just pick the one that you want. Now, that's kind of what a lot of people were doing in the first place. And rolling up characters casually, just, you know, almost as a, as a way of playing solitaire, um, was very common. I think I had a huge, you know, long list of just, you know, characters that I'd rolled. Not that I ever played any of them, but I could see that that's definitely how somebody might, in the fullness of time, you know, making up a character, go back to that page and just pick a batch. You know, you rolled it after all. And so that makes a lot of sense um, in terms of what people were already doing or that I think they were already doing. And then there's also um, the idea that you would roll six times for each one. And again, in order. And that you take the highest when you do that. So both of those, that's methods uh, four and three. Um, I'm going backwards. Um, I spoke about those first because they're, they're frankly, I found them kind of boring. Um, and the other two were sort of numerically more interesting to me at the time. One of them, number one, um, sort of stuck with me. And I thought to myself, you know, I, th I think I'll do that. I think that's a that's a nifty way, and it is roll four, take three, and then place them in the order you want. And that struck me as something more along the lines as to what I was enjoying in the fantasy trip, where you had an, you know, an allocation of points across the three features, and you made the dude you wanted. And this had a little bit more of that construction to it. And it also had sort of an enjoyable uh, possibility of having to work with one or two lower values, but things were not quite as harsh as they had been in looking at all these rules in the player's handbook for what you got for all these high abilities and going, oh, wow, it'd be great to have a 17 wisdom. And you're looking at a character whose scores range from, you know, three to 11. 
Um, this was a way that struck me as having something to work with. And in my experience using it, you often did end up with this or that, you know, score of five, six or seven or something like that occasionally. And it was enough to look at your sheet and say, hmm, what, what kind of interesting person am I going to make up? So this time for this game that I'm playing right now, I actually chose method two, which I hadn't used before, um, which is to roll uh, 3d6 12 times and simply just scratch out the six lowest and then distribute the, the remaining ones as you please. So that's what we did for all of the characters that you're seeing in the, the game. And it's not bad. It's, it, I mean, not bad. And what, is it, what do I mean by that? It's, um, first of all, in my opinion, and I haven't really you know, run any probabilities or something, but as far as I can tell, the result is not as variable as method number one. Um, it is possible to end up with a low score, but across these four characters that we've got, we aren't seeing any. And um, when a couple of, you know, this or that casual test runs, nothing rigorous, um, ending up with a score below 10 in your remaining six is possible, but it doesn't seem very likely at all. Whereas in the four, roll four, keep three, the you, you're, you will get more of a range. You will see some lower scores, um, but you'll also see some, you know, some high ones. Anyway, for our current characters, I actually don't think we ended up with any 18s. Maybe one, but maybe not. I'll have to look at the sheets. And only a couple of 17s. So the the result for method number two seems to be that you know, 11 through 17 is pretty tight across the scores. And we do end up with a couple of people with uh, appreciable dexterity bonuses. And one person has some appreciable strength bonuses. Uh, one of the fighter clerics um, and the cleric assassin uh, have, you know, have hefty um, uh, spell bonuses due to wisdom. And, but those are very generous, by the way. Wisdom is the nicest for clerics of all of the characteristics in this system. Um, you start getting extra spell slots um, and that means that you know how many you can keep in your head, which is no small thing for this game. Um, at uh, uh, wisdom fourteen, otherwise most of the, the other characteristics don't give you much until you're up into seventeen or eighteen. Um, there's a couple where you'll get like a plus one in something at, at fifteen, but you re you really need those really high scores to have yourself, you know, stand out in some feature. And also let's not forget the 10% experience bonus in all of the basic classes. You don't get them for things like paladins, rangers, druids, assassins, and stuff like that. Um, illusionists, but you, uh, but you do get them for the basics that if you have a very high score for the single primary characteristic for each of those, then whatever experience points you get, boost it by 10%. So anyway, um, I don't have much of a conclusion, just the observations of what I'm looking at for these things, just to compare with some of the other games of the time that I was playing or messing about with. Um, Tunnels and Trolls has the roll 3d6 straight through for the characteristics and you know take it and like it. And yet for that game, the characteristics feed directly, almost no matter what they are, um, they feed directly into uh, your character's features, what they call the ads. Um, there are some sort of neutral blocks, nine through 12 is kind of a neutral block, but not entirely. And also the saving throws have everything to do with the actual individual scores. So we're looking at the first attribute based resolution system in that system. And you have, um, therefore, you know, a highly individual profile of what you can do 
across all sorts of things, your luck and your dexterity and your very charisma and your strength and all these things that you can do stuff with. And so your precise score is, is meaningful in Tunnels and Trolls. Also in Tunnels and Trolls, increase in your attributes is fundamental to uh, the, the system. In fact, it's the only thing that changes when you change level and it, and it will change. So if you continue to play, you will in fact be seeing those scores change and which ones you choose to change. I mean, you can, you can change any of them. So they're more dynamic and they're more, uh, immediately applicable in tunnels and trolls. And for that reason, and I hope this isn't counterintuitive, some arbitrarily low scores are part of the fun. So I've seen a lot of people play great Tunnels and Trolls characters off of, if not you know, utterly wretched. Well, actually, in some cases, utterly wretched. I mean, pretty low scores across the board. And, and you look at it and you say, well, I guess I'll play this dude. And it ends up being, you know, reasonably, reasonably cool. Um, and the situation with D and D at the time was less compelling. Um, getting a bunch of low scores basically didn't mean much. Um, but it also was, was for lack of a better word, a bit boring. And the arguments that people might want to have with me about that, you know, go ahead. Everybody's got an opinion. Um, but if you haven't played Tunnels and Trolls, then you don't really know the comparison and I don't know what to tell you. Um, the similar situation with RuneQuest, the scores for RuneQuest, well, similar in what way? RuneQuest is kind of half and half between the two. The seven scores um, are also initially in the base rules, just rolled in order by 3D6, but then in the appendix in the back, it says, you know, almost immediately, whoa, whoa, you know, we need, we need better characters than this. And it gives a, a range of things that you could do, um, including actually just a kind of boring point allocation so that, you know, the, the average is 12 and then you just kind of move points up and down as you see fit. Um, but the point being that they were, I think a lot of these games had put in 3d6 roll in order because that's just what you do based on what they had learned or heard that's what role playing is and then breaking with that uh became um sort of a of a i don't know revelation or a process um through the course of the 70s and so you see them in these options and then in a full break with the fantasy trip well anyway um Looking at the scores brings me to think about leveling up. Um, but I suppose, since I'm well past 10 minutes, it may be time to call it. <laughs>